All right, this is the Organic Molecules and Foods Lab, and in this lab, we're gonna practice identifying the four types of macromolecules, which are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, since we're gonna be looking at organic molecules and foods, we're gonna ignore nucleic acids for now, because while our food does have nucleic acids, it does have DNA and RNA, our body does not use that for nutrients. What our body does use is the carbohydrates, the lipids, the proteins, and the fats. So in this lab, there's four different tests that, you, that we did for you on different food samples. The first test is called a Benedict's solution. What Benedict's solution does is it tests for the presence of monosaccharides, which are simple sugars. So right now in front of me, I have water, which is our control group, and this is water with nothing in it. When I add Benedict's solution to it, Benedict's solution starts off as blue, and any color change from this indicates the presence of a uh, monosaccharide. The next test that was done was an iodine test. Iodine um, indicates the presence of starches, our big carbohydrates, and any change from this kind of like yellow brown to a purple black tells us that uh, um, starch is present. Then we did the biuret test. Biuret detects the presence of proteins when it changes from this blue to a purple. We know proteins are present. And the last one is the Sudan test. So with the Sudan test, this is one of the trickiest ones. Sudan is, um, it looks for the presence of lipids. And right now you can see it's kind of very light red. When this, almost a pink, when this turns to a dark red, we can say that lipids are present. So again, we saw no change in any of our water samples because we're using water as our control and that's what we're gonna compare all of our samples to. All right, so the first test we did was with egg whites. And so if you look at our egg white before, pretty pale yellow. So then with the Benedict's test, we definitely see a change from that blue to kind of um, an orange yellow color. And I think it cooked a little bit, so that's gonna be gross for me to clean later. With the iodine test, it's still kind of that um, yellow brown color. We don't see a whole lot of change to a dark black. With the Biuret, this one is really cool. So we went from that light blue to that really dark, vibrant purple. And then with the Sudan test, um, like I said before, like this is really difficult to see, but when I compare it to my water, it looks a little bit of a darker red. So I'm gonna say that there was a color change in the Sudan test. So our next known sample was honey. So if we look at honey before, um, it's diluted with water a little bit just to help with the test. So it looks a little more pale yellow than normal. So with our Benedict's test, um, you can definitely see that it changed from blue to kind of a yellow orange color. With iodine, I would say it's still that kind of pale yellow brown color. Not a lot of color change happened. With our Biuret's test, so we start with a light blue with Biuret, but the presence of protein is indicated by a purple color. So even though there was a color change, this is not the change we're looking for. And then with the Sudan test, so this one I would still say is a very, very light red. So I would say there's maybe a little bit of a color change, but not a ton. Oil was another one of our knowns. So if we look at oil, this is just normal cooking oil. You've probably seen it before, kind of a really pale yellow. When added with the Benedict solution, it still is blue. With the iodine, it's still that um, yellow brown color. With the Biuret solution, still that light blue, no color change but we do see a change with the Sudan solution. You can see it's a very bright red, that ring at the top. So we have, did have a change with Sudan. Hey everyone, Mr. Durham here. I uh, am gonna lead the experiment for the four unknown samples that we brought in. Ordinarily, we would have your lab groups each bring in one or two items that you would like to uh, do these macromolecules tests on. Uh, instead, I just used my lunch today. Uh, so what I was working with was a nice 
turkey sandwich with some avocado with a side of Doritos. So what we're gonna test today is bread, avocado, turkey, and Doritos. So first things first, we did the bread, okay? Obviously just a little piece of wheat bread here and water. Okay, we had to soak it in water to dilute it a little bit, make sure the solutions were able to reach all the bread. First things first, we did the Bene uh, Benedict's test. That's again, testing for my uh, simple carbohydrates. Obviously it changed from this um, bluish color to a yellowish color. That's a, um, so you're gonna see that color change. Iodine test is for your complex carbs. This one's really neat. And even if you can see it right on the bread, it really turned that bread a dark black color. Then we have the burret for your test. You can actually see here that the bread actually has a little bit of purple showing. It's still kind of bluish, but it's got a little purple around the bread. All right, and lastly, we have our Sudan test, um, which has, it's probably more of just still a pink color that <clears throat> didn't have much change. All right, so next up on my sandwich, was an avocado. Okay, I cut it up, put it in a little bit of water, as you can see there. So first test again, Benedict's solution. You can still see this blue color. We look at our iodine. Iodine still have this yellowish. There's no, uh, not much change in color, or no change in color. Your burette test here, still kind of a bluish color also. And then we have our Sudan test, which if you notice here is a pretty dark colored red ring. Okay, so the next item on my sandwich was some sliced turkey. Okay, again, we mix it with water so that way it would test that liquid a little bit better. So with my Benedict's test, you'll see here, still got a bluish shade to it. Okay, even after it was cooked, still a bluish shade to it. Now the next one is the iodine test. Okay, and as you see here, still pretty yellow. Okay. However, my burette test, you notice here, is actually has purple shade all over the turkey which is a really neat, um, vibrant shade of purple. And as you see here, my Sudan test actually has a little bit of red around it. So maybe a slight color change from that pink to a little bit darker red. All right, and the last but best part of my lunch was the Doritos. It was sad I had to waste a Dorito Okay, use a Dorito for this experiment. However, we'll first look at my Benedict solution. You can see here, no blue. It's already definitely a color change here to this yellow, kind of the orange is probably from the Doritos, cheese Doritos. The second one is your iodine test. Good gracious, look at that color change. Look at the black all over the Doritos. Pretty neat iodine test. Next, we have our uh, burette test. This one's a little tough to see. Again, um, while the blue's not really there, it's not gonna be very purpley, okay? So it's not the color change we're looking for. And lastly, we have our Sudan test. And as you can see around the top, there is a dark ring of red, uh, definitely a color change from the light pink it started. Those are Doritos. Okay, so hopefully you uh, could take a little time and as you were watching us perform these tests, you were able to mark down in your data table, one, the color change, two, does that indicate yes, the presence of that particular macromolecule or no, not the presence of that macromolecule. Uh, and make sure you complete that full data table and then you can answer the conclusion questions and turn that lab in. Thanks for watching.